Affordable housing isn't something that generally comes to mind when people think of Wellesley and its million-dollar-plus median home prices. The first person who I told I was working on this story quipped, affordable housing in Wellesley? Is that an oxymoron? Perhaps, but the topic has become a hot one in 2017. Bringing the affordable housing issue to the forefront have been more than a half dozen proposals by developers to build condo or apartment complexes that would include affordable units in exchange for relaxed zoning rules under the state's 40B statute. So knowing that Wellesley needs that type of um, production, needs a more diverse housing style, um, we decided to uh, look into the Chapter 40B and spend some time land planning to see if we could come up with a community that we felt uh, proud about. Bob Engler, principal with SEB LLC, a Brighton firm that develops affordable housing projects and is involved in several pending ones in Wellesley, explains why 40Bs have heated up here. There's no hidden agenda. It's an issue of how many developers can find what sites in the West Suburban marketplace, which is so strong. I've been in it for 48 years. I've done involved with two 40Bs in Wellesley in the last 15 years and several right now that are pending. It's just a question of opportunity, of land opportunity, of good market, of finding the right sites, etc. So there's no hidden agenda like let's attack Wellesley. It just so happens in Brookline they've had several projects in the last two years. In Winchester they're getting several. All towns that are high-end towns without the 10% requirement. So it's an opportunity for developers to put something together. What does 40B mean anyway? Communities in Massachusetts that have less than 10% of their housing stock defined as affordable, according to a formula based on median incomes in the area, are largely at the mercy of the state when it comes to approval of projects that have at least 20% to 25% of their units deemed affordable. An overwhelming majority of such projects get okayed by the state. A fresh batch of proposed 40B projects in Wellesley, which together would result in dozens of new affordable units and approaching a couple hundred new units overall, have grabbed the attention of both town officials and residents over the summer. Some abutters have questioned, sometimes vocally, the appropriateness of such projects in their neighborhoods due to traffic, safety, and other concerns. And this is the single worst proposal I've ever seen put before this town. Um, I, uh, there are also worries about the character of neighborhoods being compromised as denser housing projects squeeze into areas mainly comprised of single-family homes. They warn that any neighborhood could become vulnerable to an unfriendly 40B project. The first meeting that I went to, a uh, neighborhood meeting, when we realized that we were uh, kind of under attack uh, last year, um, you know, we all talked about how we wanted to uh, respond, and, and uh, but the wonderful thing that came out of it was we found out that actually every person in this neighborhood to a head was actually pro-affordable housing and um, really came up with some great concerns about um, how it could help people. Um, and I think our, our sort of reaction to the proposals that were coming in, both of them uh, were that they were kind of in the name of affordable housing, but yet very much backed by a need for profit, um, um, uh, increasing margin by developers. Our affordable Wellesley wants to encourage more diversity in housing, and thus more diversity among residents, in part by helping Wellesley identify appropriate town-owned land that could be developed for affordable housing. Some folks want to build a big monstrous uh, um, facility for affordable housing over on the North 40. Uh, some people would like to do it on the Tailby lot. Um, and we understand and appreciate that when that conversation comes up, um, once we get to the next level of our evolution uh, in town with regard to affordable housing, we know those conversations will be tough and, and that's where we'll have to compromise. But the thing we all really have to get our head around in this town is that, is that we have a choice. Um, we can either make affordable housing happen on our own terms or we can have it happen to us. Planning board member Harriet Warshaw summed up the conundrum at a planning board meeting in July. Repeatedly we've heard from the public that everybody wants it, but. 
And I think there's a lot of education that has to go on to make us all aware of what we're really talking about when we say affordable, what we're really talking about when we're saying diversity, and what the impacts are. Because given that we're a, almost a built-out community, given the price of land, there are trade-offs that will have to be made. Michelle Chalmers is a commissioner on the state-run Wellesley Housing Authority Board, which is concerned with low-income housing in town. That's different from affordable housing, but the longtime Wellesley resident also is a strong advocate for more affordable housing here, in part because it's the law, and in part because Wellesley just plain needs it. You can't really find housing um, for less than a million dollars um, to move into uh, the town. And so affordable housing is looking at, um, you know, how do we uh, build equity uh, in terms of people that want to move up into the middle class, uh, want to move into the upper middle class. So how do we have upward mobility for people that are, you know, graduating from high school, graduating from college, getting great jobs, uh, but still are not able to, um, you know, buy their first home in a town like Wellesley. Wellesley has taken steps over the years to encourage more affordable housing development such as through the Wellesley Housing Development Corporation, which actually used to buy up undervalued properties and convert them into affordable housing available via a lottery system. Wellesley's comprehensive plan and inclusionary zoning rules that have been applied at developments such as Belclair and Waterstone also support affordable housing. Town officials regret that a housing production plan that would have allowed it to be proactive rather than reactive when it comes to affordable housing fell through years ago, and officials are now looking to establish such a plan in relatively short order. I think a housing production plan will work to proactively advance the provision of affordable housing, the diversity of housing options in town, um, and that's beneficial to the town from a planning perspective, but also in terms of consistency with the 40B and working towards uh, not being subject to so many projects that are not consistent with the town's objectives and goals. A absent a housing production plan, the town does not have a lot of ability to reject an application. Wellesley would be in good company if it does get a housing production plan in place. Other nearby communities, such as Natick, Sudbury, and Weston, are among the dozens in the state that already have them. Creating an effective housing production plan isn't easy. In my world of 48 years in this business, it is very difficult for public bodies to say, this is where we want the housing that's so unpopular. We want it to go here, and we want it to go there. And they have to stand up and tell that to the neighborhood. Frankly, it's a lot easier to say a developer has made me do it or they found the land and now I'm trying to make it the best way I can. I'm trying to balance it, but they found the site. That's a lot easier than saying, I think this is a good site right here. And oh, by the way, I think the density has to be X to make it work. Usually the density has to be higher than what towns would like to work because they don't quite grab the economics of housing. In order to create an equi equitable society, even in Wellesley, you're gonna have to give um, because that's the way it works. And so, and I think at the end of the day, we're all gonna be better for it uh, because we'll have that economic diversity. Uh, obviously it's gonna bring in cultural diversity, racial diversity, and I think that that always makes a community better. Mm -hmm.